can kill all the black folks you want to, baby. But you will not kill the freedom of black folks. It's coming. We're going to get it. We fought in every one of your damn lousy wars. Yeah. You can kill all the black folks you want to, baby. But you will not kill the freedom of black folks. It's coming. We're going to get it. We fought in every one of your damn lousy wars. Yeah.
buenas tardes. Mi nombre es María Angélica, y mis pronombres son ella y ellex, y hoy estaremos proveyendo interpretación en español y en criollo haitiano con MARP Language Services, también reconociendo la presencia de nuestre, eh, nuestras colegas de eh, lengua de signos americana. Vamos a proveer interpretación utilizando una línea telefónica. Entonces, si ustedes desean escuchar la conversación de hoy en español, pueden llamar al número que se me perdió, 786-665-8802, 786-665-8802. También, si en algún momento quieren ver el número telefónico, eh, está en el, eh, el letrero a, a mi derecha. Bueno, muchas gracias y le voy a pasar el micrófono a mi colega. Bonjour, bonsoir à tout le monde. Nous sommes en Maroc, Lourdes, avec Mab Language Service. Et je dis à ce plaisir pour vous faire une interprétation pour nous dans la langue créole haïtienne. Donc, si vous avez un monde qui a qui a aimé entendre la conversation en créole, tempérez-le 305 901 26 92. Donc, et nous voulons dire nous merci déjà pour la participation. Nous. Donc, si nous voulons entendre en créole, créole haïtien, tempérez-le dans 305 901 26 92. Merci. Good afternoon, my name is Maria Angelica, my pronouns are she and they, and today we will be providing interpretation in Haitian Creole and Spanish with MARB Language Services, also acknowledging the invaluable presence of our uh, ASL colleagues today. So we will be providing interpretation using a phone line. If you are interested in listening to the conversation in Haitian Creole or in Spanish, uh, you may direct your attention to the sign to my right and you will see the phone numbers. Thank you very much. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Perez Art Museum, Miami. Uh, my name is Marie Vickles. I'm the Director of Education, and I want to thank you all for joining us here today in person, and also for those of you that are watching um, virtually on YouTube. Thank you for being here as well. Um, this is our final program of Miami Art Week 2021. We have survived so far. So thank you so much for being here again. <laughs> Um, so today's um, panel talk is presented in partnership with Filmgate Miami, and it's the augmented reality experience of Brianna's Garden. And as a 21st century museum dedicated to representing the people and communities of South Florida, the Perez Art Museum Miami strives to be a leader in the presentation, study, interpretation, and care of international modern and contemporary art while representing and cherishing the unique diversity of Miami-Dade. Through our exhibitions and programs, we aim to encourage everyone to see art as an incentive for genuine human interaction. So it is because of that mission that we have partnered today with Filmgate Miami to host this art-driven response that seeks to honor the life of Breonna Taylor. Today's discussion features the creator of the project, Lady Phoenix, Breonna Taylor's partner, Kenneth Walker, head of Microsoft HoloLens and developer of Xbox Connect, Alex Kipman, and Joanna Popper, HP's global head of virtual reality for go-to-market and location-based entertainment. If you enjoy programs like this one, or perhaps missed a program this past week, please follow us, uh, follow Pam on YouTube, where you can find videos of past programs and performances. A few acknowledgements and thank yous before we get started. I'd like to thank the incredible team of people that have worked so hard this past week and year round, really, to produce our PAM education programs. It takes a lot of people to make things like this happen. I would like to thank and acknowledge Anita Bram, Associate Director of Adult Programs and Audience Engagement, Janessa Melendez, Education Coordinator, and our world-class audiovisual team, Denise Faxis and Andrew Bird, as well as Lazaro Yanis on the videos and camera. We literally could not do this without you, so thank you so much. A round of applause for everyone. <laughs> so without further ado, please join me in giving a warm welcome to Deliana Alexander, the Executive Director of Filmgate Miami. 
thank you, Marie, and thank you, Perez Art Museum, for uh, partnering with us for such a special project. Uh, and I'm going to keep it super short because Marie said it so beautifully, and we want to start the panel. But I discovered Brianna's Garden when it premieres at the Tribeca, premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival, and I knew that it was supposed to come and bloom in Miami as well because it is a powerful project that is going to change hearts and minds, and we, we hope that it continues to bloom and the conversations continue to happen around it, and we create a better world together. So that's all, all I'm going to say is, without further ado, here is Lady Phoenix, the co-creator, but also founder of the project. Um, it's an honor to have you and the rest of the panelists. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Really honored by your presence here. Before we get started, um, this is not going to be a typical panel. We are not going to be talking heads, you know, here for you to listen. This is one sealed container of family here. You're all welcome to participate in this panel. We're here with each other and for each other in honor of Brianna, Kenny Walker, Tamika Palmer, and Janiya Palmer. My partner, my creative partner, Sutu, couldn't be here at the time. And my creative partner, Janiya Palmer, couldn't be here at the time. Um, it's her birthday. So if you would just join me in singing happy birthday for one quick moment to Janiya, she would love that. She's in nature right now with her partner and a few friends. As you can imagine, it can be quite emotional to be here, and especially on her birthday. So she's celebrating in a natural setting somewhere else deep in the woods. So we're going to sing the Black Happy Birthday, which is the Stevie Wonder version. If you don't know it, Kenny and I. <laughs> the soulful happy birthday, how about that? We'll, move, we'll remove we'll remove any uh, trigger words and just call it the soulful happy birthday, but it is the black happy birthday. This is what we sing in our households. So on the count of three, Kenny, you got your voice together, boo? <laughs> One, two, three. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday, happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Janiya, we love you. Happy 22nd birthday to you. Also, too, uh, we want to invite one or two people to share their experience of the garden before we get started. Um, is there anyone who would like to share any feedback from what they experienced? We're not looking for anything like in particular, just to hear from you. Again, this is not a panel of talking heads. We are a family here in the Perez. So anybody want to share? Perfect. Is there a mic or shall I give? Okay, there's a mic here. Um, first of all, uh, Lady Fee, congratulations. What a beautiful exhibit. I'd heard about this um, in a couple of places and, and heard that I got really great views at Tribeca, but when I experienced this just now, I was so, I was so moved. You know, I've been going to a lot of these events at the intersection of art and tech, and I thought this was so beautiful because it really utilize the technology to create something and to involve people in an emotional way that couldn't have been accomplished without you know, the technology. It really expanded the art project. It wasn't tacking tech onto art and it was so moving. And when I heard one of the messages, especially that this woman left for her grandmother, you know, I really teared up. It was, it was so emotional. And you know, it inspired me to leave something as well. And I thought, wow, you know, what a world where if we could all commemorate, you know, the people we love and the things we love and share them with each other, you know, what a powerful way to expand empathy. So thank you. We have time for one more person. If one more person wanted to share, just raise your hand and uh, they'll come around with the mic. Okay, super. Thank you for sharing. We appreciate that. So uh, I want to start by saying this was my vision, this was my idea, but it came about in partnership with Sutu, a legendary XR, VR, AR, all the realities, all the R's artist whose art 
work often involves the elevation of humanity. And so when I came to him and said, hey, Sutu, I want to do this thing, do you think it's crazy? He said, it's not crazy. Is it going to be difficult? Slightly, yes, but I'm up for it. And so uh, because of his heart, his willingness, his network even, uh, this project has come about. So again, I stress that we are all in community with each other, for each other, because of each other. And this project wouldn't be without the community. So thank you again for being here, each and one of you. Yeah, I really appreciate it. It means a, a, a lot to me. And then Sutra and I checked in with Janaya, and we'll get into that story later of how that happened. But she's the other partner in this, for which, you know, really activated, animated, and gave life to, to this project. So they are the two partners on this. We are a trio. It's myself, Janaya, and Sutu. So thank you for being here. Well, I'm thrilled to be here uh, as well as a panelist facilitator. I really think, and just part of this amazing conversation, uh, thank you so much for just kicking it off in the spirit of true celebration. It is a moment, I believe, of really truly heartfelt celebration. Um, so now I'm just gonna turn it over to you a little bit. I'm gonna lob a question at you. Take us back to the beginning um, and how, you know, after the events happened, how you began to turn that event into this installation, this piece, this experience. Yeah, so myself, um, I'm a pacifist, you know, I, I, I don't mind confrontation, but I also love peace. And at the time, you know, when we either were making this project, it was the height of all the movements, you know, specifically the Black Lives Matter movement. And um, I'm not somebody to be on the street. I'm not going to protest, you know. I have a family. I have other uh, aspects of my life for which if I am no longer present because I'm in jail or I've been injured or dead, um, those other things uh, fall down, mm -hmm. right? So I have a great responsibility. But it doesn't mean that I cannot raise my voice, right? It doesn't mean that I cannot be active and a part of creating change. Other people are on the street, and then there are other people who should move into other avenues, right? We can't be complacent. And so my real connection was through seeing Janaya on uh, the television. I would hear the things they were saying about Brianna, and the a part of my soul, I just couldn't believe it. You know, all of these horrible things they were saying, she's a drug dealer, she's this, she's that. My soul was like, that's complete hogwash. There's no way that this person with that incredible smile and this family are those things. And uh, as I would watch the news broadcasts, I always honed in on Janaya. I was curious to know her story, curious to know how all of a sudden someone who came from a small corner of the world in Kentucky is now a national figure along with her family, having to you know, deal with grief and trauma in the public eye but also having to be sort of stone-faced and not show any emotion because she's on camera. That, that really, it tugged at my heart quite a bit. And so I began following Janai on Instagram where we all, you know, slide into each other's DMs and connect, like each other's photos, you know. Uh, I began following her on Instagram to find the truth of who her sister really was. The person that loves someone will always tell you the truth of who they are, right? Not someone on CNN or this other news channels. They don't know. They're just kind of doing their job and reporting the news. Uh, and so I began to learn more about Brianna through uh, being friends with Janai on Instagram. And I went, I remember going to Sutu and was like, I got it, I know what we're doing. I have it, it's the garden, you know, because we went through a few iterations of what this could be. And then uh, I was in one um, live with Janaya, and when it struck me, I asked Janaya just to see, because it was all intuition. I wasn't somebody who boldly stepped forward and was like, hey, I have this idea, I want you to be a part. Understanding that many people solicit her and her family and Kenny, I wanted to approach with respect and honor and so uh, continued to be in community with Janaya online, was in one of her lives, and I asked her, what is Brianna's, does Brianna like flowers? She said, yes, she loves flowers. I said, okay, cool, what was her favorite flower? What is her favorite flower? She said, the tulip. And when she said that, because tulips have a very unique story, right? They're, they're kind of this very interesting and rare kind of flower. And so um, when she said that, I said, boom, this is a confirmation that the garden is what we should do. Um, 
And there's a few things, you know, which we didn't quite know, but I felt very strongly about, such as the butterfly. Uh, when Suchi and I had finished V1 of the app, uh, part of the intro and sort of like the end of the app is all butterflies. Initially, you would follow a butterfly through the garden and the butterfly would land on a flower and that would be the flower that holds a message. And uh, you see the scene uh, in the intro where Janaya opens this box and all of these butterflies fly out. And that was another kind of confirmation. I'm somebody, uh, you know, I believe in my ancestors and culture and spirit. And so I was praying very deeply <laughs> through this whole uh, creation because I wanted to be able to present her with something where she felt like I see you. Like she felt I saw her and Sutu saw her. And we also had her back. So we didn't want to ask for too much guidance, right? We wanted some things to be intuitive. And so, yeah, it turns out that every single thing created from the color scheme to the butterflies, to the flowers, to the music, everything was on point. Sutra and I just were bawling <laughs> when we had our first conversation with her. Yeah. Now, that creative process, as you've just described it, I mean, you say we a lot. You use the word community. Uh, can you talk about how that really manifested and, and, and came through. And really, as we look down the line of panelists here, how does that story pick up more collaborators? Yeah, that's actually a really great question. I think oftentimes uh, people think the person in front of the camera or doing the speaking or on the panels are like the genius person or the person who's done all the things. And it just isn't true. There's always a team of people uh, involved and everything that we love and like. Also the things that we hate too, right? That's, that's true. Um, so there's always a team of people involved with, in what's created. And so uh, the first person involved, uh, again, I told you that I'm a prayerful person, I'm a spiritual person, so I prayed about it first. So I consulted um, my spiritual counsel, which includes my ancestors. I also consulted my mother, who battled with cancer, and the doctors told her, you have three months to live, Go home, make your plans, but you know, you're gonna die. And she's still alive many years later, so. <laughs> yeah. So my, my counsel is a bit different. Yeah, and so uh, those, my, spiritually and then my mother are the two people that I consulted and said, is this a good job, is this a, do you think I could do a good job and is this a good idea? She said, yes. Then I went to Sutu. Sutu was like, hell yes, this is great. I'm all for it, let's do it. Because also he has a small baby, right? So, you know, there, we, at the time and still, police are just like taking people out, do you know what I mean? Like it's a thing. and we can be a part of changing that. And that's the point of the garden. That's the point of being in community is to change that. We can live in a different world, but we must do so in partnership with one another and in community. So then Suchu said, um, you know, if we're gonna really do this thing, we gotta do it right. Let me uh, call to my, my network. So he called Joanna, who's our executive producer. And Joanna has just been wonderful, a total badass and gladiator. Just, you know, yeah, please. I know. 100%. Very true. 100%. 100%. And then uh, when I was like, well, how are we going to spread the message? She's like, don't worry about it. We have a publicist who's working for iJack, which is Suchu's company. Her name is Heidi. So Heidi's another person that was like, we got your back, right? And so this is our community. And then Joanna, of course, being the badass that she is, literally knows everybody in the VR, AR this world. This is true. So... <laughs> Yeah, I would like to, to volley over to Joanna. Thank you. She's the one that actually helped to connect us with Microsoft, where Alex Kipman has been an incredible champion along with China and Dahlia. So yeah, you can clap for them, absolutely. And then of course, Kenny is the rudder. You know, I check mm -hmm. in with Kenny and I'm like, Kenny, are we, you know, is this, is this legit? Is, does it, like I asked him, I'm like, would Brianna love this garden? Would she love these flowers? Would she love this approach? And he's always checking for yes or no. As he says, he's the master vibe checker. So we don't yeah. do, we don't take one step without consulting community. So, yes. Now, Joanna, can we dig into your uh, part in this a little bit more? Sure. So it was almost a year ago, Sutu called me. I've been, I'm a, I'm 
HP, I lead, I'm a global leader of the virtual reality go-to-market initiatives. And in that role, I work really closely with a lot of the content creators merging between the technology and the content at many of the film festivals for the last few years. And then I've also been an executive producer on a couple of projects on top of that, like Finding Pandora X, which hopefully some of you have seen or will get to see in the future. So Sutu called me and said, you know, we're doing this project. What do you think about it? Do you think that there are some partners who would be interested? Would you be able to help us connect into the community and help and help us find the right tech partners? And I was so inspired by the project, so inspired by the idea of using this technology in a meaningful way to help with awareness, to help with healing, you know, mm -hmm. more than anything with healing and with the view of, of Brianna as an ultimate healer and to use the tech for that purpose. And so I thought about you know, who would be the right technology partners, both from the point of view of whose tech are we gonna tap into and whose tech is, is, are, are the right partners for this, as well as which companies are aligned in terms of the values and the vision of the projects. That was really important. And so we were going to, we were going to take a volumetric capture of Janaya. And so we brought in Metastage at, from LA that uses the Microsoft technology. They offered to do the capture. And I, we brought in the Microsoft Connection, who are great partners of, in all the work that we do. Um, and so the, 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 you know, the two of them jumped in full force and have been just amazing partners. We also were working with Unity to, to build you know, the, the, the Brianna, the Brianna hologram is, is built in, in the Unity engine, and they also came in with support for the project, as well as iJack and XR Safety Initiative, and, and just you know, a whole community of people. The Tribeca Film Festival really gave, gave a lot of love and support, as FilmGate is, has here. And so it just really, as, as you said, it's, it's a vision of healing, it's a vision of community, and, and you know, Brianna, what, she was an EMT worker, with, the, with dreams of being a nurse, and this, this project is continuing that journey of healing for her and for the world. And we're so happy you're here, Kenny. Kenny just got in this morning, so we're just... <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> get an early flight, get an early flight, but we're so grateful that, that you're here with us and experiencing the garden with us here. Thank you. So I'm glad to be here, and I appreciate it, everything, like, but for the most part, everybody just showing Brianna love. All right. So, so thank you. And then Alex, uh, you know, in terms of the actual technology and really the the that that part, the real tools that bring this to life and and make it happen. Can you tell us about that part now? Sure. Um, first, let me start with a deep sense of gratitude for everybody that's here today, creating this amazing space um, for this amazing moment in time. You know, gratitude to the entire panel, to the team, um, and the work that I get to represent here. Um, at the end of the day, for us at Microsoft, we're a mission-based company, and you know, our mission is one of empowerment. Um, we're here to empower people and organizations around the globe, really, to you know, achieve more. And nothing gives a message of empowerment, in my mind, as much um, as this project. I think, ultimately, technology um, as a tool set, as an art form, really is about the ability to either display space and or time. In this particular case, it's about creating memories, right? Mm -hmm. And it's about sharing memories. And in a program like this, in a project like this, where you're really trying to celebrate someone's life um, is something that's quite inspiring. And you know, a lot of the work that we do at Microsoft is on that very topic, particularly around the world of mixed reality, is how can we um, create more immersive tool set for, amongst other things, the capture of memories, right? Um, at the simplest sense, you can think about a photo, right? Think about that as technology, as a means um, of creating memories. Paintings before that, movies after that, right? Um, the latest and greatest in that technology is being able to capture moments of time through holograms, right? Uh, being able to put someone in, for example, one of our mixed reality capture studios where you can put 160 cameras around someone, let them be themselves, but then capture that moment as is, 
right? Not just a flat version of it um, that you see behind the bezel, but something that you can authentically project um, in either physical space or virtual space and is extremely exciting um, mm -hmm. to be able to capture, you know, many of the members of this community holographically sharing the memories um, in a way that they'll persist, that they'll persist over time and that they'll be able to be represented in different spaces as the gardens start blooming um, across the globe. So that piece of technology, um, I think, is an enabler for artists, um, for creators around the world to really start painting with it um, in means of being able to um, have meaningful projects that you know, allow us to um, capture memories in, in more immersive ways. Mm -hmm. So now, Kenneth, as we listen to the technology, the science, the development that went into it that helped bring it to life, when it comes to you and the family, what's your response been like? Blew my mind, first of all. I didn't even know, you know stuff like that was possible. But, you know, I'm all here for, and I love anything that sheds light on Brianna in a positive way. And then this is a, you know, it's a way for everybody in the world to, I guess, kind of get personal yeah. with, with her and the situation, you know, in a good way, though. Yeah. So I like it. Good, good. And then, you know, as you, it, it continues to live, breathe, and reach people, how are you all working together or evolving it? or just continuing to, to kind of sit with it. It's still, I mean, look at all the people here. It's still so alive. The moment is so alive. I mean, it's never a bad thing to be overwhelmed with love. You know, so this is, this is a growing family right here. You know, these are all good people that I met and I appreciate everything they've done and, and we're gonna keep going. Like, okay. this is definitely not the last garden. So be looking forward to it in the future, but I'm just here for a ride, really. They, okay. They, they know how it's going to keep growing. I, you know, I just go with it unless, well, it, unless it's not right. Today you saw yourself as a hologram for the first time. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Y'all got to see yourself as a hologram. <laughs> That's all I can say. So version two of the app is, uh, so version one features Janiyah sharing her favorite memories, and version two will feature Kenny sharing his. So for those of you that don't know Kenneth Walker or Kenny as we know him, K-Dog to other people, um, is, was Brianna's partner. They live together. Janiyah, Kenny, and Brianna all live together. Janiyah wasn't home that night, but she also lost not only her sister, but her home. She lost her heart that night, and so did Kenny. I think people don't quite get the gravity of that. When you create memories, you plant memories in a place, and you make that your home, your heart is also there, not just your things, right? And so in that moment, someone's heart was taken from them. Someone's memories were disturbed or distorted, right, interrupted. And so what I love about the garden and what we're doing in partnership here is that we are creating new memories and we're doing it together, right? And in this uh, place, this sanctuary, no one can take that. Mm. It's a permanent reality, right? There's no place or no person to disturb that, no authority other than the authority of love there. And we need more of that around the world. We need more of that for each other, with each other, because of each other, that honors and reflects more beauty, right? Mm -hmm. More love. Now, if I could just follow up, uh, because you are, I mean, we must know, you are known in the space, in the NFT space, in the digital art space, um, as really just one of the, the major voices, someone who's really bringing it forward. What does it mean to have this piece, this experience here? We're at Basel, we're at Filmgate, um, and really that coming together, I, I believe the audience member set up before, the intersection of technology um, and, and humanity and art, all that coming together. And how does it feel to have this piece, and this is probably something that everyone can answer, really be facilitating, I think, what many of us think is a really 
important moment in that conversation? Yeah, I think people often, uh, I am in NFTs, uh, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> And um, I think often, uh, you know, NFT was like the word of the year in the dictionary, right? Um, I want to strive so that maybe like something closer to humanity, right, can mm -hmm. be the word of the year, but we're working on it, right? So in terms of NFTs, what's also connected is the metaverse. And what I, like, I think a lot of people don't realize is that the metaverse is already here. <laughs> it sure is. It's here, right? We don't need an, a digital interface to, to uh, signify that we've entered a metaverse. Uh, what I love about this project in terms of these uh, new technologies or emerging technologies is that in the sense of using all the jargon of the moment, we've created a metaverse for Brianna, a sanctuary, right? That everyone can enter once again. It's global. You don't have to be here. You can go to the App Store, the Google Play Store and download Brianna's Garden right here, right now and look at it and interact and also plant your own flower as a memory right here, right now. So um, I'm not sure that I've answered your question, but that's my response. We'll take it. <laughs> I'll answer. For, for me, there's, it's, it's really important to be here. It's you know, the, the project, both the, us at, at Tribeca as well as us here at Art Basel, both of them are important steps in this, in this journey for this project for me. And you know, a lot of it is about healing, and, and for the family, not, not, to, not to speak for Kenny, but, you know, when we've heard Tamika and Janiah speak, they're, they're still looking for justice for Brianna. They're still looking for justice for Brianna, and so bringing a project that honors her life and is about healing to one of the most important film festivals in the world at Tribeca, where, you know, centers of power around culture and around film are there, to bring it here where we have center of power around art and this year technology as well, and putting Brianna into this conversation is really important. And so I'm really looking forward to continuing that journey, to help have people going on that journey of healing around this project and have Brianna continue to represent that healing and that, that, that search for justice. Yeah, and if I could just say, in terms of the local Miami community, what does it mean to be here right now? Um, I thought you were talking in a metaverse sense, sorry. Um, to be here right now on the ground physically is important, just from a na nature perspective. The area that we activated, which sits between the frost and the pam, had small shrubbery. No life was really teeming there. Brianna showed up on the scene. She brought hummingbirds, butterflies, all manner of other flying creatures. She brought bees. Bees are in the garden pollinating, having sex, having conversations, talking, you know, making new things happen. Brianna was the reason for the season, is the reason for the season in that regard. The commissioner came by, other folks from the community have come by and they're like, wow, what, <laughs> this is amazing, what happened here? And another partner that's important to this, which was introduced by Filmgate, is uh, Subtropical Affairs, Casey, yeah. who is the green thumb that planted all of those trees. And he took us, yeah, clap, clap for Casey, and clap Sabrina. for Subtropical Affairs. Yeah. And Sabrina too, and Sabrina. Sabrina, Sabrina absolutely. And um, thank you, Sabrina. And, you know, Casey took us through the garden. He was like, this is Lang Lang. This is what they use in Chanel number no. five. It's fragrant. Do you smell it? You see the bees all around? They love it. Mm -hmm. This is another type of flower. It glows in the dark. And, you know, the, the glowing in the dark of these flowers attracts these certain butterflies or birds. And it's just like, wow, you know, everybody had such intention, right? And that's why I say, when we say the name of Breonna Taylor, we're not attaching it solely to what happened in Kentucky, right, to trauma and tragedy. We are recontextualizing it. When we say the name of Breonna Taylor, we say it with flowers on the tip of our tongue. We say it with absolute life force moving out from our mouth into the world. The name of Breonna Taylor is synonymous now with bringing people together. It's synonymous with love. It's synonymous with healing. It's synonymous with life. That's who she is, as in she brought all of this, and that's who she was, right? So it's important to be here.
just to piggyback what she said a little bit, like if I could get anything out there to the world, you know, to to most people, to pretty much everybody, you know, she's just a well, not just, but I just want people to know that she's more than just, you know, a hashtag or you know a picture on the internet. She definitely was a person, definitely, you know, was full of life, you know, and joy, and she was definitely a happy person. So I don't think, you know. I hate how people attach sadness to her, but I understand it because this is a crazy tragedy. But at the same time, like you, you have to smile, you know, and just and just know that. I mean, I guess she is not here because the world is gonna be a better place off the back of this situation. But like, yeah, she was definitely happy and full of life. So definitely have my moments, and there's a lot of those moments, you know, where it's sad and it's. It's crazy, you know, to sit here and really think, you know, she's not here anymore, but it's bittersweet when I get to see stuff like this and, and to know that the whole world, you know, is saying her name. So, they are. Yeah. What next? I mean, so much has already happened and been done, but how do you evolve it? Where do you take it next? And I think this is especially for Kenneth and you, but open to everyone here. Honestly, I do not know. I know we need justice. So I would like to start there. Don't really know how we're going to go about it. But um, I'm just, I just thank God that I'm here to be able to, you know, do what I'm doing now, to be able to say her name. So as long as I'm standing up, you know, something's going to happen. Okay. I don't know what yet, but believe me, something's going to happen. We're here. We're here for it, and we're here for you. I want to uh, ask you a question, Kenny, really quickly. Um, as someone, you know, who laughed, cried, argued, <laughs> threw popcorn at pillow fights with Brianna, who walked in Iroquois Park with her um, and had quiet moments with her, um, seeing her in the app, like, what does that do for someone that wanted to marry her, hearing the song that you guys, you know, wanted to be married to? Um, hearing that over and over again or seeing that, does it bring more life to you? Does it, how does that make you feel? Um, once again, it's, it's most definitely bittersweet. You know, it hurts to see it, but at the same time, it feels good because once again, it's not only for me. Everybody's getting to experience Rihanna with some life to her. So I think that's better than just seeing pictures or, you know, maybe, you know, seeing brief clips on the news or whatever it may be. It gives you a small sense of what type of person that she was. So I think that's important for everybody to know. And so I think, like, what's next is... Uh... You know, I feel like I can speak for the team and say what's next is that we want to create sister gardens everywhere in America. So I know this is being broadcast out to YouTube and other places. So wherever you are right now, if you have uh, your commissioner or governor or mayor or the president, um, please, you hearing my voice, understand that this is a hyperstition right now that I'm saying to you. We will have gardens everywhere on the globe. We want to start with our home space here in the United States. And we want a Brianna's garden everywhere, in particular where there are children. A lot of people have this conversation about 2020 and COVID and Black Lives Matter and other uh, social movements that happened. And they haven't actually considered children. I don't hear about children very much in these conversations. So if the national parks are not in a position to open space to Brianna, uh, where she can put her garden, then I would like to ask that the Montessori schools or private schools or you know, people who are high net worth individuals that have influence in their cities or their towns uh, step up and be a part of cultivating a space there um, the built environment is hugely important to human happiness and well-being. There um, are folks that maybe don't have a lot of natural, peaceful settings where they live, and having a natural, peaceful setting is a human right. That's right. right? So um, you hear my voice. You see us lovely people in this room. You have influence. You have power. You have a large purse. 
please get involved. Help us bring Brianna's Garden to your city, town, or school. If you're an educator and you're really awesome at public programming, putting together a curriculum, if you're a tech educator, allow us to bring the garden to your space so that we're able to bring the future into the future, right? Children need to be a part of this. Children also need a space to deposit their emotions and to deal with the things they don't uh, have words for or can't properly articulate, but they can do so by sitting near a tree or touching a flower or looking at birds and having a peaceful moment. So I would encourage everyone to help us and help Brianna bring this garden to a city or a park near them. Well, now we know. Now we know what we need to do. We heard it. And now I'm, I'm not totally sure how much time we have, uh, but I wanted to just make sure that uh, if there was time for questions from the, uh, from the audience. Ten minutes? I want to make questions. Okay. So we will now turn it over to uh, questions from the audience. Okay. Is there? Questions or comments? Hi, Lady, Lady Fee. I was kind of curious on the tech side. Um, what was the biggest challenges for, or what is limiting you from expanding Brianna's garden to be everywhere and there to be thousands of flowers versus, you know, just 10 flowers that, you know, what limitations are on the technology side? It's interesting that you asked that question. I don't think of technology as just ones and zeros or software or hardware. Uh, technology is also the human mind and heart. So a part of the limitation on technology are humans. Wisdom, understanding, and connection are all technologies. Not everyone has that in their stack. So I think that part of the limitation is, you know, again, people with power, position, influence, being able to say, make a phone call or check the right box and say, yes, I want to do this. Unity uh, is the environment in which Brianna's Garden is built. Unity has been awesome. So there hasn't really been any kind of like tech issues in that regard. Um, you know, I think that right now in terms of like 3D art and artists kind of grasping various cultural presentations can also be challenging if artists are not from that culture or understand that culture. For example, Rihanna had lovely baby hair and uh, it was, it was a little bit of a challenge with some of the artists who, again, all volunteered their time. We all volunteered to be here, right? Um, just some of those cultural things, because they're traditionally in art, there are not a lot of characters outside of what people consider dominant culture, which is usually white men or white women. So 3D characters that actually represent people of culture is really important. And so that was slightly a challenge to make the skin color match, the hair matching, the features matching. These are all things that took a number of iterations and it's not because you know, folks weren't willing, it's simply because it's the first time or maybe the first of a couple of times that they're having to, uh, to do that, to bring forward characters that are not from the dominant pool of 3D assets that exist. She's being modest, there are no limitations. We got this guy right here. <laughs> He's got stuff way beyond the level of that garden, I'm, I'm telling you. I mean, eventually we'll bring the garden to VR. That was the initial thought, is that the garden would be in VR. But also finances, right, can be a limitation. So the easy kind of like go-to-market, global, the thing that everybody can experience right now was AR, because everyone, for the most part, has a cell phone or access to a cell phone. Not everyone has access to the HMUs, right? The, the you know, the, the VR setup and yeah, also too the much. cost. They ain't ready for that yet. And, and humanity also might not be ready for it, as Kenny says, right? We, we have to go in steps. There's an educational component to this, um, which Alex or maybe Joanna can speak to. Um, I'm curious to know from you guys with a project like this, what are some of the perceived uh, limitations or things that maybe you've heard about that I'm not thinking of. 
I'll give you my perspective on it. Um, I fell in love with computing at a very tender age because it's the only art form in existence where the laws of physics don't apply, um, which means really nothing is impossible. At best, things are improbable. It's with a little bit of creativity and some pixie dust, the improbable becomes possible. Science fiction becomes science fact. And next thing you know, Kenny's playing with his hologram on his hands. <laughs> At AKA no limits. <laughs> So Alex is the real No Limit soldier along with Master P, is what, is what we're saying. It's not about limitations, it's just about the roadmap. You know, we're, first we're doing an AR version, then we'll do a VR version. We'll keep taking gardens places. But we invite, we, and we invite everyone to be involved. And to, to, you know, if you, if you downloaded the app on your phone, please share with, you know, please share it with others. Please share the story of what have you, of what you saw here, please leave a, a message and absolutely leave a message for the family or leave a message for somebody that you, that you, may, be, you may be lost in your life or you may be missing in your life. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a universal experience that we all have. And so we want, and we, we want, we want that to share that, that with you and we want, we want you to keep sharing it with your community. Another question is here, please. I just want to say thank you, first and foremost. I really needed to be grounded, and this was a beautiful experience, and I really needed this. And I think I'm already a, f a fan of yours, right, um, being a black woman in the NFT space, but also transforming this story and humanizing technology. That's what's happening. There's humanizing in it. And I think there's a lot of opportunities with that, and even the, uh, the process of creating this imagery is going to advance technology. You are in the process of making it so that people are realizing the importance of black features in this technology. They are having to learn through honoring Brianna. And that is beautiful. Um, so there is a compliment in here. This is appreciation and a lot of gratitude and a gratitude for all of you being here because it's a very hard conversation, but you are making it so graceful. You are being very graceful and kind to us in this process. And I just wonder what was the process of thinking of having people leave their own message in this because that also humanizes it. We often disconnect technology with everything else. But if we came, it came from our minds and our bodies and our energies and our life force, then it's all integrated, right? So what was the process of thinking we need to add other people's voices to it to continue the lineage of this? That's a really good question. And thank you for that. Thank you for your kind words as well. Uh, so, you know, two things happened, I think, during the Black Lives Matter movement that I witnessed through, you know, people were sending death threats to Janiyah and her family. People were calling her all kind of B word and the N word and every disparaging comment out there. And I just thought, wow, you know, where, where are people coming from that they would say this? What is the threat that they feel they need to put this person down? Um, and what I realized in the Black Lives Matter movement because race is so charged in America and you know, pretty much globally, but especially in America, race, gender, they're very charged topics. Um, I, I wanted, and I checked with Janiyah, the desire came from wanting everyone to feel welcome. You know, again, this is a metaverse, metaverse, a kind of metaverse, right? A garden metaverse. And here, the rules from outside, they don't apply here. It doesn't matter what your ability to tan is, doesn't matter what your melanin count is. Doesn't matter how straight or how coiled your hair is. Doesn't matter your income level or where you live. You are welcome here. This is home for you. And if you lost someone during this time and you don't feel comfortable you know, with the Black Lives Matter movement because certain pe people tell you you're not black, you don't belong, right? <laughs> there is that talk out there. I don't ascribe to that. Um, or you're not black, so you should be on the back of the, the line or whatever, the back of the march. Um, this is a place where they don't have to bring any of those energies with them here, right? I don't want any of that in the new world that we're creating because the people in the old world didn't have it right. 
So we must demonstrate what the world can be. And in this place of the garden, Brianna is the mayor. She's the president. She's a healer. And she doesn't discriminate on any basis. If you want healing, you want your own form of reconciliation, you want to leave a, you're a kind human and compassionate human, you want to leave a message, you're welcome. Everybody is welcome. The only rule is don't be a hater. That's it. Don't be a hater and you're welcome. Come with the right vibes. Plant your flower and allow it to bloom here for eternity. For yourself, for your progeny, for those who love you, for eternity, this flower can bloom. There's a place and a registry and a signal now within humanity where it's pure love and healing, right? And that is Brianna's garden. And so that's it. When it comes to being an EMT, she didn't say, hey, you're not black. I can't invite you into the ambulance. I can't invite you into healing because I'm an EMT from Kentucky. I only deal with black people or I only deal with women or I only deal with this kind of person. She didn't say that, right? Her healing and her, her healing abilities and her heart was open to everyone. Therefore, the garden should be open to everyone. Humanity has done themselves a great disservice by being tripped up in trigger on ability to tan and melanin count and race as it's constructed and gender that it, the way it's constructed, uh, financial ability or inability the way it's constructed. These are the Achilles heel of humanity. Imagine if we weren't so caught up in that, what could we do? How could we be together? Right? And not that these things aren't important. We must process and we must deal with, we must bring criticality to that. But we can't stay there because there is a line drawn on rock. We never, through discourse alone, gonna be able to wash that line away. That is a permanence there once you get into that trap. Love, however, is fluid. Healing is fluid. And it's not a respecter of persons. It shows up and it activates and does what it's meant to do. And that thing that it's meant to do is to elevate. Race and gender and all those discussions around economic abilities, those things actually, by the time you leave those conversations, you feel a bit more informed, but you don't feel better inside. By a show of hands, who loves having those discussions? Exactly. <laughs> it's crickets right here. By a show of hands, who loves being a part of nature and healing activities and beauty and joy? Exactly. This, we should seek our happiness together, but also individually, but also in community together, right? I mean, whomever created nature is a pure genius. I mean, you call it God, you call it ancestors, whatever, the universe, whatever you're calling it, it is phenomenal. We don't know how it works but we're glad for it. I don't know why the hummingbirds come here. We know by science, by the textbook, but you don't really know. You know, you don't, this little beak in the tongue, a little, you don't really, like, you know, you don't really, you don't really know how these, how do the bees know which flower and what, the honey, it's like there's this type of magic that exists within that. That magic is love ultimately at the end of the day, right? And if you really want to proliferate that and create more love, more, power, more empowerment for people, you can't say, you can't segregate and say, hey, you're allowed and you're not. That stuff is a hogwash and we've believed it for so long. It's a shame, really. We've turned our brain cells over to complete nonsense. We've turned our heart, we've corrupted ourselves on complete nonsense. Those people are now dinosaur fuel. We can't listen to them anymore. <laughs> So we should wanna, be wrapping up. On, on the flip of that, just like I would like to acknowledge Pam for the accessibility that they brought with the Haitian Creole and with Spanish and with ALS. And Absolutely, that. thank you. And maybe just some wrapping for each one of us. Do we have one more question? Just one more. Oh, I know who that is. Oh. I know. <laughs> This is, one of, this is one of uh, our super champions from Microsoft. This is China. And I like Dahlia. Please, Dahlia, would you stand? Dahlia. They are two people who have made this possible from the Microsoft standpoint. They are two complete gladiators who uh, have really helped us to be here. Without them, 
you know, again, in the community, we won't have this presence. We won't be at PAM. Also, Deliana, she was here earlier. Her and her team, Rafa, you know, Sabrina, everybody, we won't be here, you know. Also, funding from Emerson and funding from Jehan. I forget your, your business name, Jehan, but Jehan is an incredible gentleman who said, that's, an, that's a very lovely cause and project. I support that. So thank you, Jehan. Yeah, thank you, Emerson. Thank you, China. Thank you, Dahlia. Uh, what I wanted to share is just reiterate the feeling of gratitude um, for creating this space. This was not an easy two years. Um, I think we'd all be in agreement with that. And personally, I lost um, five people in the in the last two year uh, two years that I loved and knew. And um, when this project came about and being able to be in, involved in it was deeply moving and uh, something that I didn't know that I would uh, experience as this is a, a sense of community uh, with the strangers who have left messages in the garden. It was like a twin soul of someone who I would never meet, but it was a place that I could go and I'd love for you to talk a little bit about that sense of community that technology can bring um, in this space. Thank you. So if it's okay, maybe we go this way because I've done a lot of talking and um, I'm sure you love the sound of my voice, but um, I would love to hear from my comrades here on the panel. I'm happy to address that, China, yeah. but I want to take a step back for a moment. And um, I can try. Yeah. Um, let me try to perhaps decompose a few of the buzzwords around today and try to put it in that context, which I think and I hope is a more human context. I think a lot of people here this week are here for, you know, the buzzwords of things like metaverses and things like that. But, you know, I think people fail to do a lot of the time is actually define the terms. Um, I think put simply, metaverses are um, a or is a digital representation of of the world that, that we live in. And um, it connects with with the world, the physical world we live in, through people, through places, through things. Now, um, why is that important at the end of the day? Why is this movement important for us? Because ultimately, it erases, I think, a lot of the power structures and borders and, and things in the world. I mean, imagine for a minute, you talk and you ask about the power of technology to build communities. Um, imagine all of a sudden, if I wanted to take a walk today with full correspondence, right? With a person that's, you know, a friend of mine in Iran, right? And I want to be able to walk around in my neighborhood in Seattle with my best friend in Iran who's in Iran. Um, where is the border there, right? What is the role or the erasure of, you know, governments and power structures in that, right? That's one of the powers of this conversation. Now let's keep the example going. Um, and for a minute, talk about, you know, the ice cream cone that we find in our walk and we want to go buy all of a sudden that ice cream. Well, how do we buy that ice cream? Do we buy it with um, Iran's uh, real um, or do we buy it with dollars? The answer is there is no place in that, in that spot or there's lesser of a space for centralized banking or centralized economies. You're moving into a more decentralized way of doing it. Think about what that does for movement of power and movement of where the control structure of the system actually sits. To ultimately, you know, the last component of it, which is in this world of the metaverses, of people, places, and things, of correspondences between the physical and digital as you build community, the power that exists today in the world is all around distribution, right? If you think for all the artists here, um, where is the power um, of the artists? Without the galleries, there is very little. Right? The power structure of the gallery is one of distribution. Um, if you're a musician in the audience, and no matter how good of a musician you are, where's the power structure there? It's with the labels for distribution. If you're into product creation or community creation in tech, where's that power structure? It's with app stores as the distribution mechanism. In this world, if you start now all of a sudden building communities with technology, with people, with places, with things where, where you can have twins, right? Um, twin of the person, twin of the space, um, twin of the objects, those things, those borders, those labels start getting erased. And then ultimately we discover in the world that, you know, people are people, right? Um, that creators are creators. And then ultimately 
I think the world becomes a better place. But that only happens, right? And it's up to everyone here and everybody watching at home, everybody on this panel to actually treat that space with a tremendous amount of responsibility, right? Which is what we talk about and we talked a lot about this morning on the concept of ethics, right? And, you know, when you look at this project and what the impact of this project is in community creation, right? Or the perspective of how do you put the control mechanisms in it? so that with new technology, with new power, you actually get the results to become what we wanted it to be and not to insert into it perverse incentives into it. So much of tech today has perverse incentives in the business models today that ultimately entail uh, you know, things to potentially become not ethical, to things to potentially become lacking of privacy. Right, um, and then very quickly, the choice which is ours, and the choice is always ours as the humans moving through it, you end up choosing a more dystopian path or a more utopian path. And when you look at this project as a seed, right, it's a garden, we're planting a future in many different ways of the term, is a choice that we make as humans for utopia in that community building right, um, to lead the way or to showcase what does a world without borders looks like? What does it feel when you can actually sit somewhere and ask yourself the question, what could actually we accomplish as a species if it didn't matter who got credit for it? Mm. <laughs> so for me, uh, check, yeah, please, Kenny, flow with it. You got it, freestyle. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not the one to really be talking about that action, but I don't really have much to say. I just want to thank everybody like here and everybody watching and everything like just for your support of Rihanna, no matter how it may have came, whether it was a tweet or you know a Facebook status or whether you was in the street protesting or even if you just said it to yourself at home, I, I, I appreciate it and she deserves it. So that's it. So for me, China, and I'll keep it pretty brief, um, this whole notion of community. Um, me, I'm from the tradition where we engage our ancestors. So this idea of metaverse for me as a child started in prayer. I think culturally, prayer really is the first metaverse, right, of sorts, because it's a group of people coming together deciding what is, but that agreement happens here. You've created something new over here, right? Um, the reason for a variety of people being able to leave their voice or plant their own flower is because humanity needs new agreements. You can make those new agreements together through memories, right? <laughs> so the new agreement there, first and foremost, is love and care, right? The new agreement there is compassion, the new agreement there is also joy and beauty and life. So if we can start there in these different worlds, as Alex said, without borders, that's moving towards utopia and you involve the community at large, then what we thought of community from being here, you make the circle bigger and it's here. So again, Brianna would want, according to Janaya, according to Kenny, Brianna would want for all to be welcome, right? So that's why. Everyone becomes a gardener once they visit Brianna's garden and decide to plant their own flower and allow something to blossom there. There are multiple realities, as Alex said, happening at one time. So I think everyone will do a favor to themselves but also to their future self by planting their own flower and allowing it to grow in this utopia in this garden, in this virtual garden, because it has real world implications. They are two realities side by side that affect one another. And for me, it's one of the most uh, curious uh, but lovely things about Brianna's garden. And the technology will continue to transform, but the way people are using it uh, is toward the utopia that Alex spoke to is I think the way we're meant to be doing so in community, in service of one another, also for in service of ourselves, right? So 
I hope I answered your question. One of the most moving things that Janaya said on the panel in Tribeca was that she felt like the garden gave her a place to go and be with Brianna again. And that to me was just so moving and it really also exemplifies the, met the future of the metaverse that I'd like to see, where people feel like they can be with their loved ones. All right, so thank you audience. Thank you, panelists. Thank you, Lady Phoenix. Thank you, Brianna Taylor. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you. Thank you, Tamika Palmer. Thank you, Janaya Palmer. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Denise. Anytime. For facilitating Thank you, Denise. Really?